You are listening to the Lucha Central Podcast Network. And now, LuchaCentral.com presents Masks, Mats, and Mayhem. If you steal my ball, ball shine, that's ball a shine. shine. It's Skeletor and <laughs> welcome to a very special election day edition of Mass Mats and Mayhem. I am your host, the Outlaw LA Red. You can find me on social media at Justin Harvey 75. You can find the entire show on social media at MMM Show 75. Am I glitching, Byron? Am I good? No, I'm good. I think I'm good too. Look, I'm good. You're probably good. Up there, we got at Byron Fever. Over there, we got at Lucha Gringo. And on this side, we have at me Floaf. And election day. And I hope that you got your votes in. And when I say I hope you in in America, is it election day over there too, Meef? I fucking wish it was. (laughs) (laughs) Drag that cunt out into the street and fucking beat him. Wow. If, if you hadn't if you hadn't noticed, Meef has uh, strong convictions at times. Um, but being that it, it is time for you to vote, I hope you got your votes in in our very special MMM polls because we will be going over those today. That is what I mean when I'm talking about votes. We're going to get your election results today on this episode. As uh, many of you are out there watching the real thing go down, the the ballots are rolling in as we speak. It looks like it's a potential landslide, but you never know. Um, Justin, I, I got a problem. <laughs> What's your problem? Uh-huh. I thought you said that this was uh erection day. No, no, um, no, no. Election, election day. Uh, fuck, so I got to put pants on. I, these are saying. veneers, man. These are veneers. I have a little bit of an impediment sometimes when I'm saying. We need a veneer election. sponsor on the show now. I need a, I need a pants sponsor because he said it was erection day. So I'm free balling it. And now I get yeah, that man. is true. It's it's a crime every day we're not sponsored by Zubaz. That's yeah, the, exactly. that's z- by who? Zubaz. But they're almost out of business right now, so I don't think Zubaz? they're going to be sponsored anyway. Okay. They need us. Well, yeah. Who's running it, by the way? Weren't the Road Warriors? Wait, do you reckon we can get dead stock from them? You know, when they go bust. Oh, hey, boxes. that's there you go. See, I in America, they just, it's weird though, because sometimes they have to like declare that stuff destroyed to get all of the insurance money when they go out of yeah. business. Oh, so yeah. like literally there was this awesome rehearsal spot where like Ozzy Osbourne and all these huge bands in LA used to record. And then like they went out of business and they had to destroy the whole thing and level it to the ground with like microphones and everything in it. So on the day when they were going to destroy it, basically anything that happened on the property that day was whatever, and they didn't care. So we went in and got a bunch of mics and all sorts of stuff, and then they were technically destroyed in the demolition that happened later that day. And there was like, there were like amps and speakers and in like hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff in there easily that just that got cool? like big consoles and stuff. Yeah, that, Justin yeah, is actually that, recording on a microphone that Ozzy <laughs> grew up on. It might be one of those. Was that it, the well, studio that Dave Roll did the um, documentary on? No, no. This was a, a no. rehearsal place called Leeds. Uh, it was not an Leeds. actual studio. It was just a rehearsal spot that people would... Uh, it had a big room in it, so you could go and do your tour rehearsal there. So a lot of big bands yeah. would go in there for a little bit on their way out to rehearse. Um, anyway, let's look at one of these polls right now. We'll be, we'll be covering these throughout the episode, but, uh, I kind of want to talk, I want to talk about, there's one of them that's still open, so we won't get into that one yet. Um, but obvious, let's, let's just hit the obvious one. The, the one that should have gone this way and did go this way. Favorite MMM show co-host. No, um, thank you. What is the best promotion for Lucha Libre in 2020? Now, and this is a little bit strange. CMLL came in dead last with 7% of the vote. No, no, no. Maybe you don't kill half your mm-hmm. roster with COVID and you'll you'll get some more votes. <laughs> but the funny thing about actual... that is they came in last and there's only two true Lucha Libre promotions on this list. Mm-hmm. How do you mm-hmm. come in last when you're one of two? What's you you know? run things like CMLL, sloppy oh shop. My God, that's I mean a, the, the so one woman who took over it and was destined to actually change it and make it run like an actual company and do something good with it. They ran her out of town, even though she mm-hmm. technically owns the company. <laughs> 
She got the Dixie she Carter treatment. Yeah, she would have done it. She got the Dixie Normus treatment, and it would have been great. Uh-oh. Well, so in last place, uh, you know, CMLL. Now, the other surprising part about this particular oh. uh, poll and the votes that came in, because this is a voter special, so we need to talk about your votes. I don't know if everyone exercised their right to vote or not, but 23.3% of the people who voted in this poll picked WWE <laughs> as the best promotion for Lucha Libre in 2020. And AEW, same moment. Wow. And, yeah, 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 AEW yeah. also tied with 23.3%. Wow. So um, I, I, hope you guys, well, I hope you guys are enjoying that fucking Kalisto push then, huh? <laughs> Wow, I mean, How is the Pentagon of Phoenix push going? That's just, it's just pretty good, <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> this week, this week, I was Jack Evans and Angelico doing. Well, we'll get to that because that's how, a many Mex- how many more Mexicans have been employed by AEW? But it's it's also like <clears throat> what ta- what lucha is being programmed there. You know, they're also not- how is the Mega Championship doing that now? That's an AEW. Well, that's that's oh, <laughs> look that that would be my one reason to actually give AEW some votes because the Triple yeah. A Mega Championship is actually being held up over there at hey, me, uh, AEW. Where's where the fuck is Masquerita Dorada? Is Mascara Dorada? Where where's Grand Metal yeah, Link, man? Metal Link. Yeah. He's hanging out, chilling out with his pinata. Where, where where's uh where's uh not Kalisto? Uh, Lince Dorado. <laughs> the funniest one. The funniest one is. The, just, the new Sin Cara on Instagram. Yeah. That's always worth checking out because that's funny. I mean, I think he just, says that there's a new Sin Cara coming and he's the Sin Cara and he's got 15,000 followers, but his mask is really cheap. <laughs> so, but Sin Cara's mask was getting really cheap before he left WWE. So, oh, no, this is really, really cheap. This is like chintzy cheap. cheap. <laughs> Damn, I man. don't know. I just find that uh, I found that one surprising. And of course, uh, Triple A, who hasn't been running shows pretty much until a few weeks ago, uh, came in at 46.5% of the vote in this particular poll. Um, and given this poll had uh, some of the lower numbers, we posted this one in like the middle of the night Friday and people were out partying. So didn't get a ton of votes, but I don't think it's inaccurate to the sentiment that's kind of out there right now. Like, look, if you still want uh, Lucha Libre, AAA is still the place. They're running the Autos Luchas now. I've seen a little bit of it. I haven't really mm-hmm. uh, invested a ton of time. They don't seem to be really heavily getting into storyline right now. No, I, they said they won't. They're get, they're like standalone shows. So yeah, so they're easy. great. Yeah, it's just your performers out there performing, getting people some work, entertaining the crowds. They, they've had some decent turnouts too, and they're still trying to figure it out. Though. From the, the the televised version that I've seen, I'm trying to figure out like how high the stage is raised compared to where the cars are. Seems like it would actually be pretty hard to see. I don't know if they have big monitors out there. You can't really tell from their hard camera angle. Um, but even the hard camera angle seemed a little low and weird. Like it's a little yeah. hard to watch. And it didn't look like the cars were in the little pits like a drive-in either, which helps a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Like but I mean, look, just for getting out of your house, taking the fam to do something, um, you know, seeing some Lucha Libre, you know, keep keeping the your favorite performers out there employed and doing something. I'm all for that. And, you know, obviously every promotion is a little bit hurt by the fact that travel for a lot of performers has been very difficult. Visas are obviously an issue right now um, with COVID. So just performers getting in and out of countries and showing up in various places is difficult. So you do have a little bit of a limited roster down there in, in AAA. You can't bring some of the guys that are like doing the AEW stuff down all the time. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's yeah. tricky for all of them. So God bless Conan and whatever he's doing. I pre- I'm pre- he's probably not even going down himself. I bet he's just phoning it in. Fuck, I wouldn't do it. Fuck that. I mean, I'm he sure he's, it. I'm sure he's calling in stuff and, and he's making suggestions sh- and on the phone with today. Dorian. Uh, so I want to say San, not San Antonio. Oh God! Where is it? He's doing one for DJ Voz. It's a Day of the Dead multicultural event. Oh yeah, I think is yeah. is it in Texas I'm somewhere? Local. Paso or something? I want to say I want to say it was Texas. What's that other place down there? Uh, San Antonio. 
Uh, no, 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 not in Texas. Amarillo, Texas, you son of a bitch. There's mm. New Mexico. There's Arizona. Arizona there's Maybe California. It's Arizona. I want to say it's Arizona. <laughs> Utah. Those are all the ones on that border down there, Beef. Well, Utah's technically Mexico. California. They don't Mexico. teach American geography over there in England. <laughs> so, well, I know, I know half of America belongs to Mexico. So, well, gee, well, I mean, like, I know where Cardiff is. Come on, man. I've even where figured out where Falmouth is at this point. You you got to know a little something about American geography. I, well, it's, it's just a big pile of shit. So, <laughs> oh, we all got right, the, get, the right. Well, one of these days, a, I'll expect I'll explain the electoral voting map to you because there's some weird stuff on that, like congressional district of, for electoral votes, where you could win part of Iowa and not the rest of it, or or the center of Maine can go one way and the outer ring of Maine can I go a different understand. way. Why you have an electoral college which was designed around stopping slaves from being able to vote to count? And, and you mean and around. you don't understand that? I pretty much those are still around. That's pretty Bro. much exactly why we have it. <laughs> he starts like, talking about owning it. slaves, and Casey just bounced. <laughs> well, he had to go check on them. That's true. It's, it's, it's an, it's an Casey doesn't even own land. How can he own people? <laughs> that's so true no no look so like me flow the whole thing is um you know people are under the mistaken impression that america is a democracy a full democracy it is not it is a democratic republic which means that you choose people to represent you and every state I'm, every different part of the union has a different way of doing that apparently and yeah. uh, you choose people to represent you when the two people are chosen by who can raise the most money and therefore be chosen by people who take the money off them yeah yeah democratic republic sounds like fun okay, okay. but hey look you you've all all the denizens of deliciousness have exercised yes. their right to vote triple a is in fact the number one promotion according to you the denizens out there for Lucha Libre. All right. Makes sense. Oh, kind of. If he voted WWE, you disgust me. <laughs> well, mean, look, they, it might be because their favorite luchadors are there and not because they're the best promotion for Lucha Libre, but because they do. I mean, they do have some of the best well, luchadors around. To be fair, for a minute, they're doing a great thing with Andrade and, and Selena Vega. Um, and then they, you know, then they brought up some of their NXT luchadors, uh, those guys up with them for. I mean, Mysterio thing's actually doing quite well with Dominic. Yeah, Look, that's, and, that's and Rey Mysterio. Let, but but at the same time, you have to you have to admit that Rey Mysterio is the number one luchador in the world still. Of all time. Based on based on popularity, based on accomplishment, based on the fact that he still performs in ring. He's what? the number one cuck because we know who that kid's real dad is. Woo! True. And look, but look, if Eddie was out there and still doing it right now, I'd yeah. give it to Eddie in a heartbeat. But of yeah. the guys that popular, oh, I mean, that's... but I'm just saying, look, Ray was one of the guys that popularized it along with Eddie and Psychosis and a couple of other guys that really made it a big thing here in the States, you know, and Conan helping out. And then. You know, but he's the one that's still out there performing. He's doing stuff with his family. You know, Aaliyah's in love with Murphy now, which I thought was actually a good angle. I, I'm sure Casey hates me for saying that, but yeah, I, I was entertained by it. Look, this is the telenovela thing. And, and, that, and imagine imagine doing, doing a storyline where an older gentleman slides into a teenager's DMs. Wow. Is she, uh, what, is you know she what? All I was age, watching. 18? She's 19. I yeah. was just watching Wing instead and i was watching freddie wrestle leatherface and you know i had a way better time way better time it actually wasn't a solid match i mean it kind of sucked a dick but <laughs> it's a little sloppy but it was fun on a scale from, face did a from mongo to the mcmichaels how was it what's that meave on a scale of one to mongo mcmichaels which was it <laughs> on a scale of it, one to mongo <laughs> it was it about ice train <laughs> why why who what has happened? Mongo's finish should be a jumping tombstone pile driver. Mm, tragic. Mm. The guy wants to be in a wheelchair. Just give him a hacksaw clothesline and he won't accidentally murder people. Or a pounce, you know. By the way, uh, the pounce, uh, with regards to the Lucha review, I'm just going to do the whole thing right now. Fernandez. No, Byron, Byron, we we have an entire segment for the Lucha review. It's after we do the Denise thing, we come back, we look into the poll, I we just, do the Lucha I just review did thing. The whole episode. 
And so he did a wonderful yeah. pounce. It looked good and it was safe. And I just, it made me think of every time I see COVID denier Lance Archer do a pounce, he like I mean, he kills somebody. murder someone. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, that's he, kind of he, his character. He's not, he's not called the Nice Hawk Monster, okay? Correct. <laughs> Correct, Mundo. Well, you know, is that, it's a bit of a murdery hawk. It's a, yeah, you have to, it's you have to enunciate that a little too much, actually, anyway, because, you know, people it, might say think you're saying he has a nice cock, and yeah. It's bad business when he's pouncing future star made a, made uh, a call. Or Will Hobbs, and his neck almost, like, snaps through oh, the bottom ring. Chowda. Chowda. Show there. Look, anyway, since Byron sh- Byron's so anxious to get to the uh, oh, Lucha just, Underground yeah. Rewind, let's do this. Let's jump over to Denise Salcedo in Lucha Central Central and see what's going on in the Lucha Central Podcast Network, and then we'll come back with the Lucha Underground Rewind and some more of the oh. voting results here on Election Day MMM Show. Hey everyone, it's Denise Salcedo here in Lucha Central Central with a reminder of where and when to catch all of the great network content this week. Get the full lineup and listen to all of our shows in the podcast network section of luchacentral.com. Sundays on the Lucha Central Facebook page, world traveled shooter of the camera kind, Jerry Villagrana goes mano a mano with a fellow photographer to throw down about some of their favorite photos they have taken at Lucha Libre events. Monday, Business of the Business returns as Mass Republic President Kevin Kleinroth takes you inside how your favorite Lucha Libre merchandise gets made. On Tuesdays, Mass Mats and Mayhem takes you inside the world of Lucha Underground as they take you weekly through the series with the benefit of hindsight and the benefit of special guests from the groundbreaking series. Check out the premiere video stream every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern on the Lucha Central YouTube channel and at luchacentral.com. Then listen to it on your favorite podcast platform every Wednesday. Tuesday nights live, it's Wrestle Boss, where Favi Chulo talks MMA and pro wrestling with special guests and listener Collins. Visit WrestleBossLive.com Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific to listen live or call in with questions or download the show on podcast platforms on Wednesdays. Wednesday nights live on Facebook, it's Spanish show La Mesa de los Margaros, giving you both the news and the cheese made from around the lucha world. Special guests and a whole lot of fun make it one of the most talked about shows in Mexico. Thursdays, it's straight out of the bodega with Papo Esco and PWR promoter Gabriel Ramirez as they have guests from throughout the wrestling world pull up to give an inside look into their careers. From indie standouts to television superstars, each week brings a new name and perspective. On Friday, it's your double dose of Lucha Central Weekly podcast, one in English y el otro en español. Lucha Central Weekly is where you'll find all the top stories of the week, both inside and out of the ring from Mexico and anywhere luchadores are in action across the globe. Be sure to subscribe and follow all your favorite Lucha Central Network series on your favorite podcast platforms, either by their own series name or or subscribe to the Lucha Central Podcast Network show pages to get all of the shows in one easy feed. And please consider giving a rating to help more fans find the shows that you love. For now, this is Denise Salcedo signing off from Lucha Central Central. Have a great week. You don't know what it's like. Go ahead. (laughs) Thanks, Denise. That was super duper awesome. And by the way, your IG is kind of creeping me out this week. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah, you agree? Me, me Fluff agrees. Anyway. Nice, pay, nice change of pace. Her creeping you out. Yeah, you know. Ooh. Things My change, man. Sometimes the wind blows. Denise, sometimes the wind blows red velvet. I don't know. Just depends on the day. Always blows on the roof. Oh, dude, I, that's the most delicious of cakes. Oh, and we are definitely going to talk about some Thunder Rosa today. Um, I talked to Mel earlier this week. I know everyone is speculating a lot of stuff. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But first, I want to get to another one of our polls because you, the denizens of deliciousness, had an opportunity to vote. And I hope you all exercised it because uh, this poll, I think, says something about um, Meatloaf and Meatloaf's (laughs) ability to manipulate the interwebs. Maybe. I don't know. What do you think? Byron, mm-hmm. right, let's see that poll. What are we at here with your favorite luchador for 2020? 
Our favorite luchador for 2020 is not Flamita. 1.4% of the vote. Um, and this this poll That's got funny. considerably more votes. It's not Bandito. Bandito, the Ring of Honor thing uh, is almost tragic at yeah. this point. I really kind I of wish Bandito. Bandito like, got that was the worst. I just there first, yeah, but. Yeah, I just I mean, hope he's right always now. alive, man. I, I feel he's, like it was he's a in his good, restaurant now. It was a good call when he did it, and it's a terrible choice now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what well, are you going to do? It's a good idea for like a two-year thing, but then he resigned, and it was just like, no, don't resign. Also, like, Russia's uh, fucked off as well now. Russia's like, nah, fuck that shit. But I what refuse. do you think? I mean, if Bandito was in AEW, would it be a better scenario right now? Do oh think, my uh, god, Bandito! Jesus Christ, the guy is. Li- Honestly, you could put him straight into WWE in the title picture against fucking. But would um, they? Is my point. Like, if he was, no, in, no. if he was in, in AEW, of- or if he was in, like, when he went to Ring of Honor, I was like, okay, this is a chance to at least see this guy perform, like yeah. for real. Even though he um, won't get the spotlight, nobody will really be talking about it. Like, his matches will still be fire. But if he goes to, I mean, if he went to AEW right now, he'd be under Jack and Angelico. I like. I don't know that he'd be doing anything. Talent-wise, he looks- should be on the very top. Him versus him and Phoenix should be at the very top of. You, you know, top first of people. all, first yeah. of all, Penta not being on this list. We're going to talk about votes. I got a caucus for all of you right here that didn't put Penta on this. I refuse to vote in this poll. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> well, now were there some write-ins? Did anybody write in Penta? Let me look here. Um, I, don't, I don't read the comments on our post because, quite frankly, our audience disgusts me. We got write-ins for Dynastia and Black Taurus. That's about yeah. it. Okay. You know what? Dynastia actually deserves to win. Black Taurus just rules. But Black Taurus is super, see- super entertaining. Would not consider Black Taurus to be Luchador of the Year, however. See, like, Dynastia is, like, one of those wrestlers that every time I see a match, I'm like, oh, my God, this rules. I need to talk about it. But then I forget. So, right. yeah, I think a new gimmick is in order. That looks a little cooler, and then uh, people will be like, "Oh shit!" Well, yeah, dope. it's like he's having great matches, but the impact of those, yeah. you know, is is suspect. But that's the same issue that Bandito is having a little bit too. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, the, and this is why you need good booking, you need storylines, you need good TV time, you need a good promotion. And Honestly, it, though, that was Aerostar's trajectory for like thirty-seven years. So, yeah, I can't hate too much, you know. We still, I mean, we're still cheering him. But- Honestly, Look, I think if he was uh, somewhere like TNA, he would be f- yeah. quite far up there and he'd be on TV. Yeah. And that would probably put him in a better position if he went to an You know what? Well, Bandi- Bandito, Bandito at Impact would be dope. And yeah, Dynastia yeah. at Impact would be dope. I would rather have Bandito back in New Japan, personally. That like, would be that awesome, would be, too. Yes, yeah. yes. They need, he needs to get in that Super Juniors. But, what were you going to uh, say, no, Byron? Speaking of, speaking of Impact, um, that just reminds me back when, uh, I think the last time Pentagon, Penta was really featured best mm. at singles competitor because they brought him in. He got a run on top, but they also kept that sort of mystic sort of appeal to him. And his promos, his vignettes were all they're almost in a way borrowing from the Lucha Underground thing. But he just looked like superhuman, like extra, like like bigger than life at impact. And it made him look super awesome like a bigger star i feel if aew gave uh penta a run like that and they gave him promos where they gave him all like the spooky special effects and stuff then he would top the list for sure it's just i I mean i i don't i i don't it's hard like are you just it's almost it's almost like aew can't write themselves out of a fucking paper bag is that what you're trying to say byron no not at all i'm I'm saying that (laughs) Penta um, has just that extra presentation available to his character, and it's almost like a waste to. Um, it's but like, I mean, look, Penta. You, here's the weird thing about Penta to me: he seriously is just right back where he was when he was in AAA. He's yeah. this, he's this really great standout mid card guy that never really gets anything booked. He, he just goes in circles, feuding with the same guys, kind of doing the same matches. He's kind of back in that rut. Sadly, I feel like he's actually very comfortable there. He's a guy that's always liked putting over other people. He doesn't have any issue with putting over other people at all. Never has. Never has had a big ego from anything I've ever heard. He likes to go out there, do his matches, do his work. He, he'll he take big bumps when he has to, but doesn't 
uh, it doesn't play it fast and loose too much anymore. He doesn't try to do super stupid, risky stuff unless it really has a point. You know, it, and he's he's kind of a little bit in this journeyman wrestler phase of his career, and maybe he's fine with that. I, however, believe that you get anyone that can write for him just a little bit or that tries to, and he's going to go through the roof. The character is over. The move set is over. He has the work rate when he wants it. And, you know, he could be literally the top guy. He could be like what Kenny Omega was two years ago, where he had literally the respect of anyone who watched and liked wrestling, whether he was their guy or not. Like there was nobody two years ago that was going to be like, oh, yeah, Kenny Omega sucks. Nobody. Didn't matter if you liked watching him or if you were watching New Japan or whatever. You knew he was a top guy wherever he was. Pentagon could be that guy, too. But somebody's got to book him that way. You know, he's got to have the opportunities. Uh, I think the thing is now he's making super good money. He's supporting his family. He's doing well. <laughs> So and he knows what he has to do to work. Like he knows what he has. There's like yeah. a level he's got to work at to keep his job. Yeah. And he's working at that level because it's career longevity at this point. Yeah. I mean, the, and, the tag team situation definitely is. But he's also a very team player guy. He's not the guy that's going to be backstage lobbying for some big push. He's just not that guy. And there's a lot of guys that aren't that, you know, no, especially at the expense of his brother. Yeah. And, and, you know, maybe it is Ray Phoenix's time to shine who I believe probably should have won this poll though. I do have to admit that, uh, what did Ray Phoenix get here? Ray Phoenix got 26.4% of the vote, a pretty sizable chunk, uh, and was leading at one point in this poll. Um, like Ray Phoenix is a phenomenal standout talent. Top five top five in the world, if not top one for me. Yeah. Probably the best, he, he the, again the best is, wrestler in the world right now. Right. And he is not necessarily getting utilized that way. Um, so I can see why he did not win this poll. He doesn't have a belt. He hasn't had a, a real run at the top in a while. Um, he's coming in and out of several promotions. I think he's just kind of getting his feet underneath them in AEW somehow, like a year and a half later from when they were doing, you know, just the pay-per-view specials with AEW to a full year of TV, you know, his, his runs in, in AAA and whatnot, like somehow everyone knows he's the guy, but no one has put him in there as the guy since really this first season of Lucha Underground that we've been going back and watching. Yeah, like I mean, that was the last time he was really the guy and you could tell he was getting a tremendous push. He did get mm-hmm. that match against Nick Jackson. Yeah. At the beginning, which, I mean, there there wasn't much of a storyline or build for. But he know, should be feuding with Cody. Years, he should be feuding with you know Kenny. Yeah. He should be feuding with the literally the top guys in AEW. He should be Ultimo Dragon. He should be carrying some serious gold. He should have the Mega Championship, the AEW belt. Yeah. So, like, Honestly, you, that's, that's what that tournament Triple H Drake and gold early COVID tournament that they taped. Yeah. Well, what they should do, honestly, is they should call up Conan. They should do a deal for Kenny to drop the mega championship to Phoenix. Let Kenny have the big, the AEW gold. Let Phoenix represent the AAA gold up there in AEW. Why not? Get their belt on TV. He's still one of their guys. He's still signed to AAA, too. So he can come back down there when things open back up. They can get their belt on TV. It gives AEW a little something fun to work with. Maybe they have him drop it to Penta for a couple of weeks and then Phoenix pick it back up. Or, you know, put Jack and Angelico in there and mix it up with some of the other AAA performers, their former performer. Well, Conan probably wouldn't go for that because Dorian probably wouldn't go for that. But beside the point, like, there's things that they could do and, and they need to give Phoenix some kind of push. But... Let me get to our winner of this particular poll because I have a feeling one of us has something to say about this. The winner with an overwhelming 60%, 60.1% in a landslide victory, Santos Escobar, the artist formerly known as El Hijo del Fantasma, formerly known as King Cuerno, Santos Escobar takes away the, the crown on this mm-hmm. one. Well, and it might like, have to do with the fact that the man actually retweeted this one himself, didn't he? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I sent out to the Phantasmaniacals. Yeah. I, I mean, I feel like, you know, any WWE star gets a hold of a of a uh, web poll. It's probably going to help its chances of him winning. Um, though we have another poll later that we'll talk about that. It's a pretty dope mask. 
Thank you. I yeah, thank you. Look at the back. Meef, oh, did you cool. I gotta I gotta like I gotta get a real head to put this on, but still so waiting it for her to arrive from Mexico. Meef, who's the owner of the uh Rey Mysterio uh HDF mask from Halloween Havoc? Who got that? You, no, 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 that's actually the Rey Mysterio mask from ninety seven. Oh, he actually had the real one. He didn't wear it to the ring. No, the, he, what, what he wore on the entrance was a um, Day of the Dead mask. Yeah, see, that father was far away a lot because... I couldn't tell. Oh, they, they did some really bad lighting. Yeah. And then took it off as he He was, took it off too soon. He should have left it yeah. on longer. Yeah, but he's also so handsome. It's like, what are you going to do? <laughs> so handsome. Get that mask the off whole his face. Place, they actually wrestled him with the original 97 Halloween Havoc tights. And he, uh, Ray Mysterio actually sent him down the entire suit. Does wow. he have to get it back? I mean, I mean, uh, do you want it uh, back? I, I want it back. <laughs> I want it. I was like, oh. I, I forget. Message. I forget. Meef is the guy who will actually wear worn ring attire in his bedroom. No. No. How, yeah, how <laughs> I, I keep it luch- luchadors have worn it. That's it. That's respect. Me, now. How come I never so- wear a mask like they've worn? There's either. no tights over your shoulder. How come? I thought all right, so Meef Loaf, here's here's my question. So whatever, Escobar won this poll. More power to him for winning this poll, for winning the the, the popular vote here. But do Love you it. believe in your heart of hearts, Meef Loaf, that Santos Escobar is a better luchador than Ray Phoenix? That's my real question. Even if you take it back to Phantasma Phoenix days, like who's who's the better of the two? I know I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> he just ones. called look he just called phoenix the number one in the world he did yeah. not call hdf that yeah. in terms of in ring ability currently phoenix is better true I, I, look. Asthma is a better performer in terms of the promo and actually the way he carries his body look, in the ring. 100%. Like his promos on NXT recently where he's coming in and out of English and the way he fired up on Swerve and like he is, I would say Phoenix is the better worker. Uh, Phantasma might be the better performer at this particular yeah, it, It's kind of like um, comparing Arnold Schwarzenegger and like yeah, uh, very uh, different styles. Very different you know, styles. Uh, for, for me, uh, shit, I forgot an all action. I forgot all actors of all time now who are really good. Like well, Dolph Lundgren. Lundgren. Dolph Lundgren's no. really good. No, Jan yeah, Michael yeah. Vincent. Yeah. Jan Michael Vincent's really good. I just, like the, I just like that his favorite actor of all time is Arnold Schwarzenegger. No, no, no. <laughs> I was going to say because because to me, uh, Ray Fenix is kind of like Arnold Schwarzenegger. That you know? he's like ridiculously good at action. Does that, does that mean he does like that, under Whereas him? Phantasma is more like a classic actor, you like know, Al Pacino. Whole, yeah, yeah, and it's Al- like an Al, Al, it's like a, yeah, an Al Pacino versus Whoa. Schwarzenegger. Whoa. You love Schwarzenegger, and you every loves Commando, greatest film of all time. Wow, Phoenix! Ah. <laughs> what if, hey, can we get can we get Phoenix to do a video saying, uh, you know, when I I said I'd kill you last, I lied. You know, I, when I, I would lied. kill you last. I lied. Yeah. Kill you. <laughs> Come on, don't deny yourself the pleasure. Put a knife in me. Mm. Chili cheese Jenny. Really best for podcasts. Got a little too erotic oh, there, me. George. MMM show, the premiere of Mukbang. Oh, uh, you're eating something. Podcast. Well, hey, guess what, guys? Autumn is Chicken in the butt. air. No, not that. Guess what? Autumn is in the air, and Manscaped is here. Oh, to I'm sorry. Did you guess that- what? Oh. Did you guess what, Justin? I know. I, heard, I did guess what. What is what? What is Stone Cold in the air, about? Justin? So maybe you could tell Stone Cold about some of these ball shavers. Yeah, well, Manscape is here to ensure that you don't carve your pumpkins when you're grooming. And by pumpkins, I actually mean uh, your balls, Steve. Your balls. Thank you. In fact. Manscaped is on a mission to change the way you approach caring for your balls. And great news, they just released all the products in the UK, Canada, and Australia. So that means you too, Meef, can be as clean as Stone Cold. Well, what kind of products do they have, <laughs> you mealy mouth bastard? Well, they've got the Lawnmower 3.0. What? I said the Lawnmower 3.0. Best trimmer offers replaceable ceramic blades, advanced skin safe technology, helps reduce all those little grooming accidents, you know, in case you got your knee brace on. 
All right. And then they got the uh, the new Weed Whacker. What? Mm. <laughs> we need to be whacked. I'm just going to get wetted this whole time, aren't I, Steve? God damn it. How do you deal with this in a live crowd? Um, the, the, it's an ear, nose, uh, uh, ear and nose trimmer. You know, it's got same skin safe technology and all that stuff. Ceramic plates, it's, it's safe for your nose. And then there's the crop care kit, which includes the crop preserver ball deodorant. What? No, the crop care kit. <laughs> God damn it. Price <laughs> check on a crop care deodorant. Well, if you act now, you can get it for twenty percent off with code MMM, Steve, <laughs> and, and free well, shipping. Let me, let me tell you something, there, Justin. Byron came over to my house and he said, "You know what, Steve? I think we could be a team. I think we can be partners." And I looked at him and I said, "DTA, you stupid piece of trash! Don't ever trust nobody. You'll never be my partner." Cause you're a ball haired freak and you suck. <laughs> you know what else we, you. you know what else we got, Steve? What else we got? Justin? We got the crop cleanser body wash. You know, if there's <laughs> one thing I can't stand, it's when somebody smells like a stinky pair of balls. Okay. Yeah. You and got, got it. And you can also use that on your hair. Then we've also got the uh, crop mop. No, ball I can't, white. Justin. No, 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 Steve. Well, you can't use that on your hair, can you? All right, you've got the uh, crop mop ball wipes. You can use those, right? Yeah. Oh, she said. <laughs> Deborah used to make you wear. Deborah oh. wishes I had those. So did Lady Blossom. No one remembers her. Oh my God! How about the uh, foot duster, Steve? You need foot duster. That's the stuff you that keeps your feet smelling good. You know who was a big fan good. of the foot duster was Carrie Vaughn Eric. Useful when stumping a mud hole. I bet it also, is. Also, Tony Atlas. You see, sometimes I stop a mud hole <laughs> and I walk it dry, but it's so dry that my feet stink. So maybe I need some of this foot duster, son. What about the uh, the, the crop cleanser? We already talked to crop crop. Listen, all these uh, items are formulated. They're completely vegan, cruelty-free, dye-free, sulfate-free, paraben-free, so you know your manhood. Guyans, your bulls. Huevos. 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 They're, they're in good hands. Well, I'm so glad that they're paraffin penguin free, Justin. I don't know what the fuck that means. It means they're safe for your skin, your body, and your politics. Are they safe for my balls? Yes. 100% safe for your balls. For my testicles. <laughs> Listen, Mr. For my cojones. Yeah, you're, yeah, those. So, if you act now, you go over there www.manscaped.com That would have been a good time for what, Steve? www.manscaped.com You can get 20% off and free shipping with code MMM. That's three M's. MMM. Code MMM, huh? That's it. If you all want Steve's carpet to match the drapes, give me a hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> All right, we got to get to the Lucha Rewind this week. We're oh, looking first at... First off, first off, real what? quick, real quick. I it. bought the foot duster. Oh, I did bought you? the nose hair trimmer. Both of them are amazing fucking products, and I cannot recommend them enough to the point where I had to break being Stone Cold Steve Austin. I'm sorry for you audio listeners. He wasn't really here in studio, but... Um, I got to tell you that foot duster is the shit. I wear dress shoes all the time. Those are ventilated like butt because I wear cheap ones. And let me tell you that foot duster, I smell like roses when I take those shoes off. Actually, I smell like nice tea tree oil. Oh, that's kind of good. The nose thing is now available in the UK as well. $39.99. And and available in Australia. Uh, don't don't, say, for, don't forget like our, our cousins up there in the 51st state of Canada. They can get stuff too. Oh, I like all those hockey player guys that Byron likes so much. What's up? Oh, dude. Yeah. It's, time for, get, it's time for them uh, to get rid of that, uh, that crotch mullet they got going on. I wonder if the uh, lawnmower 3.0 could do something about Byron's face, facial, the duck dynasty thing. That, are you, are you going somewhere with that Byron? Like in that's actually an e- riding his face. I I don't see it unless I'm in front of a mirror, so I just forget to shave. Jump, jump. Jump, jump, and jump, all, jump, the, jump. all the mirrors in his house are broken like he's Frankenstein or some shit. And uh, 
Uh, dude, I, I, I'm, I'm saying this is your friend. You're approaching ZZ Top territory. Yeah, yeah it's, it's frightening. So, it's a little scary. I'm thinking, I mean, I just, at this point, I forgot. Oh, Bring it. My face. Braid it, Brian. Put a, put a little, nice little braid in the middle of it. I braided nice my, my other hair for a while. Your pubic hair? My hair on my like hair. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Shit of diamonds. I uh I ordered some of the uh crop mop ball wipes because uh I'm gonna be on the go a lot. You know, things happen when you're out on the go and you're out on the road. So, you know, and Thunder Rosa has promised that she's gonna wingman for me. So I figure I need to have those in my kit. Well, let me tell you something, Justin. I'll wingman for you anytime you want to punch a lady. Now give me a hell yeah. Nope. Not gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go on to the Lucha Underground Rewind this week because we got to look yeah. back at season one, episode 25. Wow, 25 episodes we've done since we brought the show back, guys, because we started all over from the very wow. beginning of Lucha Underground. And um, isn't, there, isn't there an unwritten rule that we don't reference Stone Cold beating women anymore because he's so friendly on his podcast? I Oh, I, that, that's I, what it I does. Don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I thought Stone Cold was here talking himself. <laughs> I, I only ever bring it up to shut people up about things oh man look let's be honest there's a lot of people in wrestling that are just diabolical people in real life it's just sad yeah news. carl anderson holy smokes hold on dun, 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 dun. so uh this episode is called the way of the drago um, a little the huevos of the drago i think this is a little homage entitled to uh bruce lee obviously I, I yeah, made a post of Enter the Dragon called Enter the Dragon. <laughs> well, you oh, see, it Bruce Lee pun? It was a Bruce Lee pun. Yes, Byron. <laughs> you see, Enter the Dragon is known as Way of the, Way dragon, of the dragon in the UK. And a Dude, certain they should have spelled it. That. They should have no, yeah, spelled yeah, it. The they had the opportunity to spell Way, G-U-E-Y, and didn't do it. <laughs> and that is such bullshit. <laughs> So what happens when you get a bunch of white people running the show. But scout, a shout out to Skip Chase. And if you haven't heard our interviews with him, he's the guy who directed all the vignettes and came yeah. up with a lot of the stuff. The, the cinematic godfather of wrestling is what I like to call him these days. Go yeah, back and check out those interviews. He'll, he'll talk. He talks quite a bit about Bruce Lee and Drago and some of these segments. Mm -hmm. And we also did an interview with Drago a little while back. So check those out too if you want a little more insight into it. But they are both huge, real Bruce Lee fans, and um, this is a little homage to that in the title. Whoa! 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 Us, us three, not Byron, because Byron. I know everything. Uh, Be water. It's us, us three plus Skip Chase and me to make a samurai movie. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm the only one here who actually makes movies, and you want. Yeah, but you can't make a samurai movie. I can make a samurai I, movie. I can make a samurai claymation movie before you could make a movie about samurais. Why? Why don't you? Can't be asked. I've got a. I've got a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the best, best answer be, ever. That's, that should be a shirt. Just can't be asked. Uh, that's beautiful. Um, I've got a samurai movie sitting, Byron. If you want to take a crack at directing, it's called Nakitsura. It uh, that means the tearful face. It's like a prison tear samurai uh, ronin yeah. movie. I want to do, yeah, I'm down. I also, I want to do um, some sort of, um, I, I don't even know, just a mixture of all the best genres with Paul. Film about a sailor. I, um, I, 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 have, I have a samurai movie for you, oh Byron. God. It's called. Uh, kicked off his shoulders. It's called Tamaga Kayuina, uh, which is Japanese for my balls itch. And it my, is. My balls a, itch. We're doing that yeah. second still? Nope. Yes. <laughs> this, this is a whole different thing. <laughs> Listen, speak, speak speaking of movies, I've been no, watching, I'm going I've watched back all to four IP months this week. All the Ip Man, yeah, well, all Ip Man, Man, whichever you want to say, you know. Are you serious? No, yeah. see, IP Man, Man was my IP Man was my old job. Right. Ip I'm, Man I'm, is the martial artist. IP, IP Man, Man is is. I'm, I'm obsessed with <laughs> old camp, uh, J Chinese uh, folklore heroes, so I was very happy to find out about Ip Man. Yeah. yeah. I'm very uh, much a big fan Meef, of Sinsu. Have you watched the Five Deadly Venoms yet, Meef? Yes, that's true. Okay, good, 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 good. good. Oh, no, no, sorry, I apologize. That is on Netflix now. I need to watch it. It is on Netflix. They just call it the Five Venoms there, but it's the same yeah. movie. Yeah. Same yeah. movie. 
I don't think it's edited at all. Anyway, listen, uh, season one, episode 25, The Way of the Drago, um, vignette number one, uh, Dario chews out the crew, and they deserve it because they're the crew. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just like the fact that... I just like the fact that he points out that they lost to two losers and a girl with one leg. He goes up to yeah. the crew. Hold on. He goes up to the crew and says, hey, do you guys know what a layup is? Yeah. I thought that was a bit awesome. I think they should know what basketball is. Mm. Why? 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 Because, yeah. never, because of the, the Lakers. and the Because of their height? <laughs> They're not very tall guys, Byron. Yeah, but oh, we, about basketball in LA. <laughs> So we, we have, have some high things to like discuss. Basketball jerseys. So. Look, basketball is not about uh, racial divides or geographic locations. It's purely about height. It's, and those it's guys are not entertaining tall. people <laughs> who are mindlessly need entertaining because they're terrible. It, it, I can't believe it's classed as a sport. What? I didn't know you had some kind of aversion to the hoops game. Hoops wow. is awesome. It, it's just wait, wait. It's, it's netball. Um, I just now look, I will I admit how people like basketball because it's just I, go, one guy goes at the end, scores maybe three points. Then but go you're the missing end, the point, scores. me. If you're, wa- you're, you're watching I'm all just, the parts that don't matter, all you need to know is that the last four minutes of game seven of the finals is the best sporting moment of the year. The and other than that, you don't necessarily need to watch the rest of the season. A bit, oh, you mean like when I watch the Super Bowl? No, the Super Bowl is a different story. Can we say Super Bowls are copyrighted? Maybe I should censor that. If you I, I, if it's super space bowl, like you're talking about a bowl of weed or something, it's fine. No, I think you, I think you should I think you should censor it, Byron, because people will think Meef's talking about watching like a Lars Sullivan movie or something. Oh Lars Sullivan. Well, he got too lost camera time this week. Anyway, no, speaking of not that he, yet, because we'll get to he that too. Something. He did in his interview, they're like, what do you want to do to SmackDown? He's like, I want to promise SmackDown a lifetime of like shame and embarrassment or something. It's like, bro, look in the really You're already that doing that to one person. Have yeah. the interview where he um said that he did a school shooting or something. There was a high school massacre. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I didn't. I've not watched it personally, but everybody commented about the high school massacre. And I was like, "What the fuck have I missed there?" I don't know. They they're off their crock with that whole thing. I don't think it's anyway, going anywhere. And, and see, and this is where COVID does a disservice to wrestling because if there was any kind of live audience right now, WWE would be getting the message loud and clear that Lars Sullivan yeah. is not over. <laughs> it's not going to be over, and it is a snooze fest. Even oh, regardless God. of his personal. Retribution? When there's real fans and retribution has to be over. Oh, see, yeah, when when Lars started in NXT and he was doing the gimmick where he was beating up his tag partner when that guy would lose, I thought that was funny and I thought he was doing well then. And then he kind of had a couple good showings in some like four man, like some big match, some like big match main events. And so he did all right. And then you find out everything about him, but like all the all the background you know drama aside uh you know um all that stuff aside he just isn't interesting as a single <laughs> star no he's not he no all right look 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 we got we've gone off the thing we've gone off track here i gotta talk about lucha underground we got lucha review <laughs> anyway <laughs> phoenix versus kill shot this match is great think about if you had this match right now this would headline oh. any pay-per-view this yeah. match was awesome it does look taller in this as well, though. <laughs> Just prove yeah. it. Well, I swear the ring ropes on that place must be small. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. But <laughs> these guys... These, these guys... It just was just super good. I'm pretty sure this is the first time they ever met in under any circumstances, right? Probably, yeah. I mean, they did a handshake at the beginning. It was kind of a, a, a knowing look. I feel like these guys worked out uh, in the ring a bit together before this because they, they looked... Well, well oiled the whole time. Mm-hmm. Wait, are we uh, skipping to the main event? It has no, no, and that's the funny part because we're talking about Phoenix versus Killshot, and this could <laughs> main event anywhere right now. And this was like a throwaway match on this episode of Lucha Underground. The main event this started the same way too with event. the handshake. But this was, uh, I mean, this this had a nice Lucha feel to start out. Mm-hmm. Um, S- Swerve was still working his indie style, but it fit perfectly with Phoenix. And this should have been the clue right here that Phoenix was going to do great 
after Lucha Underground out on the indies because he took an indie guy like Swerve who's got some ups and can run around but doesn't necessarily work Lucha Libre and hadn't worked Lucha Libre much in his career at all. And he made Swerve look great. Like these two guys, uh, going back and watching this now, I'm just like, oh, there's. I'm not surprised that I love these guys now because of this. Because this match was just amazing. Yes, yeah. yeah there, unfortunately, good. there's a big drop off. Swerve was good, but at this stage, he was he was especially at the time we're watching very obviously green. He was super. He yeah. was pretty loose and and his he just was a little reckless with his moves, and which is great because you have him oh, throwing those kicks. Good. At, like oh step at Phoenix and it, and then Phoenix is like, guess what? I do the same thing, dude. Look, every spin kick in this match was fire. <laughs> yeah, I mean they were all super super good. Um, yeah, but look to me honestly, even with what you got with a little bit of 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 slop on Swerve, Phoenix I think fixed almost all of it. I still think this match right here would be better than eighty five percent of the highlight the the headlining matches in wrestling in the past year. It's probably about I mean, the nice and in the pot, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, this was just good stuff. I was very happy with this one. Um uh, and uh the fire driver as um yes, fire thunder driver. Fire thunder driver, thank you. Matt is, didn't uh, call it the fire thunder, he calls it the fire driver, fire but it's driver. called the fucking fire thunder. Me and Byron just, know that was my question. I was like, why does that sound wrong? What is he saying that is not right about that? Because that's not the right move. But he said it with such conviction that I just believed him because it's striker. <laughs> yeah, you should stop that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I should I should have stopped that about four or five years ago. I love how a striker though still like he's like you could tell, especially after talking to Conan about Vampiro's sort of te- uh, commentator tendencies. Vampiro would say something like Conan and a small brain, blah 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 blah, and it's striker will just be kind of like. Well, agree to disagree. Moving on. Yeah. yeah. That's a bit uh, later on when he does the, uh, and does this, uh, an intestine buster or something. And my person's like, is that really what it's called? And it's, it is now. <laughs> the intestine um, buster. Breaker. Y2J code breaker. Vince McMahon move. But anyway, yeah. Fire Driver wins. Clean win over uh, Killshot, who is the newer guy here. Um Good, though. He's not on total jobber status, but he certainly shouldn't be winning over the guy that they've invested half the season in so far. Yeah, Because clearly uh, Phoenix has been getting a push, and they referenced that push, too, with, with his big wins over Mil Muertes and others. Um, mm-hmm. I don't expect yet. Matt Stryker to be smart enough of a fan to know who Mr. Ganoske is, let alone the name of his move, so we'll just move along. Paper champion Matt Stryker. You know who wow. had a great move? Still bitter. Rikishi had a great fire thunder driver. He did because he's got a huge Old fucking ass. You're right. Yeah. And Bam Bigelow had a great, yeah, great yeah. one. Uh, Greetings from Ashbury Park. Yeah, he had a great one, but he also like sometimes the head would miss the mat by like a foot and a half. Mm, yeah, yeah but Bam Bam also ended up changing it to the big ending pretty much. Okay. Yeah. So well, I know what it wasn't said try it. either. Yeah, yeah, they changed it a little bit. He wasn't, they were a little worried he might actually drop someone on their head. But nobody ever weight. got, I remember that whole shakeup, but did he ever actually drop someone? Was there ever a reason why Bam Bam got no. all that shit for that move? Bam Bam's been nothing but like professional and like a good wrestler. Yeah, like, I'm trying to think if there's yeah. any, if there's anyone that he didn't protect at some point. And, and I, I can't think of any big Bam Bam botches ever. I can't it could have just been because he lost weight and he didn't have the ass no, padding to keep I, doing it. Maybe. He worked a program uh, in WCW with Goldberg, and I could see... Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I would have dropped Goldberg in his head anyway, just out of Goldberg. Saying, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do like that. Just like Undertaker, Just like the yeah. Undertaker. Yeah, I'll, I'll give Undertaker some props for that. I would yeah. have sure that it's some concrete there. Bill wasn't exactly fond of taking a lot of moves, but that's because Bill didn't know what a lot of those moves were. But taking moves wasn't fond of, fond of doing moves. He's a football player. What did he know? Oh, Goldberg, yeah, kick, yeah, when really Goldberg first started, he had a good, he had a, a cool move set. It was actually ahead of its. He had an actual move set, is what you mean. Yeah, he was like, yeah. A, he had a cool hybrid MMA uh, move set uh, before it was cool, you know? Yeah. Yeah, he had a pretty good like rolling ankle lock that was legit, but he stopped doing it because <laughs> it yeah, wasn't his over. Assortment of cool power slams, but then it's like, 
okay. If, if you he did some moves and some fans didn't react to it, so he got upset because he, ah. he's quite he's quite precious, isn't he, Mister Goldberg? Well, when you're getting that kind of push for the entire beginning of your career for like four years straight where you get to win every single night you're on television, I'll it never, kind of does I'll that. I'll never forgive them for letting him beat Raven. Look, the storyline worked on TV, though, man. It yeah, all no, worked on TV. It Goldberg. may not have made Bill Goldberg into a super awesome human being, but it certainly worked for television. Um, mm. Vignette number 2A. Uh, Dario busts into the bathroom and tells Drago, oh, I thought I'd find you here. Because yeah, yeah. This way you live. Drago was in there spanking it as usual. That's yeah, problematic. you can't get away with that in today's environment. You can't have a boss just barging in on, in the bathroom on his employees anymore. No, it's a public bathroom, isn't it? It's an open bathroom. The stall. You know the what's weird? It's we've been we've been calling Davari the piss queen this whole time. When really, maybe. It's but Drago. maybe that's why Drago was in there. Maybe he was filling up uh, Davari's cup. Maybe. No, he actually makes some money on the side, handing out mints and, and um, giving hand what? Maybe, hand. maybe his tongue's that long because it's cleaning the urinals out, and that's why it's all mm. black and gross because that bathroom's nasty. I think it's I, I think it's Meef's idea though that it's more that he's doing uh, concessions on the side, like many of the performers yeah. at Lucha Underground were known to do. <laughs> except he's selling the, he's selling Davari drinks out of his trunk instead of gimmicks. You wash your hands, and he hands you a paper towel, and you have to tip him two bucks for it. <laughs> Spray them with some green mist. It's not like there was a whole bunch of Lucha Underground merch for them to make money off of. Someone told yeah. us, it was Roach or DJ told us that a drag was always in a bathroom because of the cool, cool the tile. Cold floor. DJ said it's good for his skin. We'll say that Drago drinks the a lot of coffee. Yeah. He does, does like he? coffee. He does, does a like caffeine. Coffee. Oh, that's why his tongue's all black because he drinks yeah. so much coffee. It's like stained. Yeah. Gross. Um, anyway, uh, Dario says, you will thank me for this later. I don't believe that that's true. I didn't know <laughs> what happened in the toilet. Well, Dario's kind of full of, full of BS here. Yeah, um, yeah, and then vignette to yeah. B, we go to a commercial break and come right back. So on video, if you're watching it on Tubi or any edited version, you won't see a commercial there. So, uh, we roll into Dario talking to Puma about not to get into his, not to get in his feelings about, uh, Drago. And then uh hernandez we go kind of right into on the other side of the locker room hernandez rolls up salty about getting thrown into a three-way with cuerno and cage which is rightfully so and so uh dario is like oh you know hernandez he's a big guy with little tiny baby nuts so uh, i'll go along with him right now and i will uh i'll make it a number one contenders match so there you go hernandez you get to be uh in a number one contenders match instead of just having your ass whooped by two guys that don't like you Baby Nuts hasn't started yet, though, has it? Not yet. But I got to tell you, watching this segment... Uh, I, it's a lifestyle, I, not a one-off, Byron. Hernandez, <laughs> Hernandez just, to me, watching this show back, he comes across as such a star on Lucha Underground. Oh, yeah. Like, like he's... Swag. I mean, he's toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with uh, Dario, like, acting-wise. Hernandez? Yeah. Oh, because I thought you were talking about Puma for a second there. I was going to be no, like, what? what? No, no, no. no. Puma is there. Puma is there. Listening to the new guy get to talk on camera, and he still can't. But don't you think that that's part of why Hernandez looks so good right here is because Puma was in the middle of this segment? You got Dra Drago even gets to talk in this episode, and Puma yeah. doesn't. Yeah, no, I, but I think, I think they're doing... Drago doesn't even speak English. It's... <laughs> Yeah, he, and he gets to talk in English. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I, I also think as, as far as like cinematic style, the style, the, the presentation of the show, they really had it honed in and they're doing really well with that. So they're able to comp they're able to show people at their best, which is probably also why they're still not letting Puma talk because they wanted to show him at his best. His best. Well, <laughs> speaking of showing people at their best, now it's time for the Penta Victims match. Featuring all the biggest stars in Lucha Underground, the superheroes of Lucha Underground, the guys that make the entire promotion go round, the people that keep this business afloat. Vinny Massaro, Arhenis, Ricky Mandel, and Famous B. Top names. Top names. I love Which this. I, I kid, because I actually love all of these guys. And this is, I, I feel so bad for them that this is the moment that they get, like, 
They all have yeah. their arms broken. They're all limping back into the ring after Pentagon has pretty much decimated their will to live. And um, they don't even get to actually even have the match of scrubs. Not even a lockup. I was cool with that, except that Pentagon wasn't the one that ran in and beat the shit out of them. That was no. my problem. It's yeah, Tejano but- mad about piss drinking Davuri. Davuri. Yeah, Davuri. Davuri. It would be so funny to have Pentagon like, come in and chase him off with a stick or something. <laughs> Like these are right, my victims. So I got rid of you kids. I, I loved it though. I mean, whatever about the Davari angle, but this was the first time I think Tejano came in as like the blue collar brawler, sort of stone cold, you know, triple A stone cold. What? Triple A which made every pop. It was good. The crowd popped too. He had a he had great energy. The promo was good in English yeah. and in Spanish, mostly Spanish, but it was it How was well done. Did he didn't swear. Which is amazing. Did he might have sworn all the way to the ring, but as soon as he had the hot mic on, somehow Tejano did not swear with the hot mic. Didn't Casey? Casey they were also still we letting learn? kids into Lucha Underground back then, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> didn't we learn a phrase, something about like, I'm going to split you in two in Spanish? Well, it's, I'm, I'm going to separate I'm going to separate you from your mother. Yeah. And then it's, separate uh, your mother. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's something really, really foul. <laughs> Tejano, yeah, for those yeah. who don't know, um, when he's running across the ring, especially when he's doing uh, rope running spots, he likes to say really, really bad expletives. Like, not yeah, he's uh, he's yelling. He will at me curse before. you back into your mother's womb and then have sex. Yeah, with it. it's terrible. He, like he the things at that me, he says but all all he said to me was, "Oh, Cerro Miedo, huh? Look at this!" And then he lost the match, <laughs> <laughs> which is good stuff. It's um. Another- Another one in the win column for Casey. Just like how Prince Puma lost that loser leaves match. Who's getting Cerro Miedo now, you little bitch? Now, so my question here is with two white guys, a Mexican and Famous B in the ring, how come Famous B is the one that has to get power bombed? <sighs> just asking. These are just <laughs> questions. Exercise your right to vote, people. Well, I mean, it mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. how uh, Lucha Underground is, is, uh, operating due to uh how do i say this the best way uh to genre conventions mm. Mm. so so you're saying you're saying since it's on a channel with a bunch of horror movies the black guy has to die first is what you're correct saying. correct okay, first it makes no it makes sense horror. that's not at all at, to what i'm saying it's but the I, laws of science fiction horror it's totally okay byron it's not you I was, but I watched, not anymore what? not anymore <laughs> I gotta and you know on. what? You know who you have to thank for that? You have to thank Will Smith. Kincaid, Kincaid from Surviving Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Sure, he was the first one to die in part four, but he made it all <laughs> three. Also, Demon from Friday the 13th, part five, played by the great Juana man himself, Miguel Nunez. Yeah, but then there was this thing where they switched everything around, like LL Cool J in that shark movie where he's the chef. They made the black guy okay. the last to die all the time. And then like Ernie Hudson in Abyss or Deep Star Six or whatever one that was where he makes it all the way to the end and then dies at the last second. They just switched it around so that like the black Hudson. guy just dies was, at the very end. Uh, let me tell you, fuck yeah. LL Cool J because he didn't die in that shark movie. They made you think he was dead and he came back just like he did in Halloween H20. Oh, that's oh. true. You're right. See, that's not fair because now they're making them do twice as much work as all the... All the other guy actors and probably them, still not paying them. Then Byron, wow. I watched like the newest. Uh, or oh, I don't know. I was at a friend's house and I watched the a new Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And I was very confused. I was like, it was an awful movie. I couldn't tell you even the plot. Still making uh, those. Casey will know the But I was like, yeah. How come, how come this guy the first um, one to die? How come this guy isn't getting killed yet? And he kept sticking around. Like horror movie character who's black. Candyman. Yeah. 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 Is he the well, only one? Yeah. No. Um, he's um, the best one. He's the best one, but dude, Rich first of don't all, don't forget Eddie got, Murphy is vampire in Brooklyn. Come on, man. Let's not let's not oh, forget Blackula oh, and Blackenstein. Yeah, Blackenstein was Blackenstein is dope. The Blunch Black from Brocha Brain. That was a Simpsons joke. That's not a real movie. No. Uh no. Uh, I gotta I gotta say. We're discussing we're discussing black people in horror with a guy that made a horror movie with not one black person in it. Yeah, I knew one, but he I couldn't afford to fly him out from California to be in it. 
And it wasn't me because Byron met me no, right okay. after he finished that movie. No, I had I had it. I had some extras that were, but it, uh, <laughs> I gotta say, I Justin, I Justin died. Of Pennsylvania Justin's Nobel, death in Scanners uh, in Transfer no, Six. Transfer, yeah. Transfer Six, very late in the movie. Yeah, I made it very far. I made it. I made. I even got a line and everything. I'm credited as an actual actor. I'm not just an extra. We're not just extras anymore, Byron. We can die for real in movies. Listen, um, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's talk Byron's about the only rapper we know since Vanilla Voice. So Look, another thing, speaking of movies, that I found really great about this episode is how is a very Dario have. Dario and Dorian. I don't know if you notice it. Well, we get the debut of one of our favorites, my but, champion, Marty the Moth Martinez, yeah. who is playing basically. Here's here's where I feel bad because you got Vinny Massaro in the match before this one who doesn't get to do anything. Yeah. And then Marty Martinez basically shows up and does what Vinny did in real life as a gimmick in the show. <laughs> yeah. How, ba how bad thinking. is there? You slapping Vinny around in this episode. This is terrible. I was thinking the same thing, but also me and Dario Cueto had this exact same conversation as well. Okay. So it makes sense. But it's just funny because, you know, if you guys haven't seen, go back to our last Vinny episode. He, he talks a little bit about how he got into Lucha Underground by basically, you know, getting in good by showing up and just standing around until he finally got a job. Um, and they let him have some, even though Chavo Guerrero tried to bury him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is, man. Not everybody can get over on day one. Um, but then, you know, Marty the Moth shows up with his yeah. uh, I almost won but didn't win tough enough self. And, you know, EV Dub pushes okay. him straight to the top, basically giving him uh, Vinny Massaro's gimmick. <laughs> well, Marty was supposed to be from the beginning but he fucked himself up really bad on a dive in a dark match at like the first taping. Big surprise. So this is him getting back after that. And uh, so the fans were already ready to see him because they saw that happen. Now, uh, yeah, for Marty those of you who don't know, if you go to see uh, Marty do anything, if there's no camera on him is when you should be watching him the most. This guy bumps off camera and in dark matches more than he does on TV. It's amazing. Yeah. He, I mean, he definitely uh, learned a lot and matured a lot as a, as a performer on the Underground, which you could see starting out mm, where he became world champion. Um, and he, he talked to us about that, how, you know, he learned to take the character in a certain way to have a better potential. But also, um, I feel, especially as he's beginning to hit the circuit again to start taking bookings, he's had a back injury. He's had he's been hurt for a long time. Yeah, uh, I mean, he got that right before the last time I saw him in cross at uh, Mav Maverick yeah. Wrestling. And like the Ultima Lucha 4, the last match that he did there with Penta, like he had to go to the hospital. And then like at the end of Ultima Lucha or in Ultima Lucha 1, I think in a battle royal, he was off camera like you keep bringing up and he's just doing head first bumps into the stairs. He should like he's he has a lot of good character work. Yeah, he does. And maybe he could not try to shorten his career so much i mean but it's part of what makes him uh you know lovable and adorable you know it's kind of like yeah. the he's kind of the tommy dreamer kind of guy that like he's gonna just, go out there and do big dumb things at the behest of everyone else and volunteer to do them before anyone even asked him to i mean he's that kind of guy i just i love uh, that i love that guy i love that yeah, guy so man. much man i just say it out of concern and out of out of you know Look, out of personal love and concern for him as a human being, Martin Casillas should definitely not throw himself around the way he does. But for look, me as a wrestling fan, <laughs> look, man, being completely Martin, look. selfish, please, Marty, throw yourself out of a third story window every time I see you because the junk is just entertaining. Yeah. Look, man, I, 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 uh, all I got to say to Marty is whatever gives you a boner, bro. Don't listen to either of these guys. I just right. I want to say, like, I do feel a special bond with Marty because I currently have some of his blood in my home. Yeah. And I, I just I feel that my, my favorite uh, my yeah. favorite Marty story is he comes out um, after winning the belt at uh, Lucha Underground during season four. And uh, I'm backstage or whatever, and I see him, and he comes over. He's going towards the Pardo Potties, and he's like, dude, dude. And I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. He's like, I told you. 
And then uh, he goes to shake my hand and he just goes like this and he sticks his hand out and I shake his hand. It's his wet chonies from the match inside out that he just sticks in my hand. <laughs> if you all, if everyone remembers, they were as tiny as possible because that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to wear as little as possible as a joke. It was so gross though. I mean, there was still championship <sighs> ball sweat right there. In my hand, and then Marty just looks at me and just starts laughing. Then Cross and London walk by, and they're just laughing hysterically. <laughs> and then, like, Eva Lee's walks by, and she's pointing and laughing at me. And then Sonny Kiss is just shaking his head, and I'm just feeling like a complete ass clown. And I didn't keep them. I could have kept them, but at that point, I just handed them back to him and went about my business. And, like, thanks, champ. Thanks. Because Congratulations. Now, you know, you know how you win that situation, Justin? You stuff those fucking things in your mouth like a champion. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. What you do is right in front of them, you put them on. I almost did that. I almost did that. But it was, you know, it was the He's ice temple. This. Anyway. <laughs> Stories aside, we've got the debut of Marty. Marty says his spirit animal is the moth and the temple is his destiny. And we shall see about that. Cage versus Cuerno versus Hernandez for the number one uh, contender spot. Look, Hernandez looked, Hernandez looked really good in this match. This match was too short. It was going great. Uh, Hernandez out doing of the, the, the five back. moves, he got four of them. Yeah, like, look, Hernandez doing the backwards uh, skin the cat up yeah. the, the ring corner. That was dope. I was like, yeah. whoa, where? Big man got some ups. What happened? <laughs> he could still move. Like, his knees uh, a little bit later in his Lucha Underground run weren't doing as well. But right here, he seems like he's in top form and he's running around and you know, I think they made it, this match short to protect him more than yeah. anything else. But you know why that happened to his knees? Because I Nancy Kerrigan him during the fucking <laughs> Believers Backlash match. It just didn't make TV. Um, <laughs> because Hot Tub Guy zapped him in the balls with a belt a few times, and he's been <laughs> ever since. Oh, no, that isn't the knee problem. That's the weenie problem. That yeah. we're wow. Um, I do like uh, I do like Striker's commentary for just this one match. Tell you, liar. No, because Stryker, Stryker says that maybe Cage got all jacked because of uh, insecurities he had as a kid. He, <laughs> I just so he, was, said, he said Cage had a small penis. Basically, <laughs> basically, basically, he said he had small man's complex. He said he said that Cage is yoked because of a Napoleonic complex in general, I think, was what he was inferring. He's and not he's, short. He's a he's a relatively he's average like size. Five, eight. I'd say he's mind. more like five, ten. <laughs> no. He's the same height as Melissa Santos really? when she's wearing heels. But yeah, okay. when they stand side by side and she's like dressed normal, they are eye to eye. I'm but it's weird. The same. He's the same size wide, though. Dude, when we were backstage at, um, what was it, in Vegas, Byron? Yeah. The cage is back there. Like, he was the same size as... Like the small guys that are back there, and then Cross and Johnny Mundo walk up, and Cage looks like a dwarf. Man, it was weird because in my mind, Cage was not that small, but he's that small. Yeah, we're taller than a lot of those guys. We're I'm I'm like a, a almost a half of, or three quarters of a head taller than Cage. Super duper weird. Of me and him is an inch taller max than me. Wow, and I'm five seven. It's just weird. Anyway, um, I like this match. Hernandez plants Cuerno for the win. Um, the Marty the Moth run in where he gets destroyed um, was cool. Like, look, he got to run into the the temple. And uh, Meef uh, on commentary, they said that uh, Cuerno lost because he's the little one. They said yeah. that on commentary, yeah. well, which was funny because Cuerno looked the same size yeah. as Cage easily, which is funny. But. I did enjoy. Um, we've talked about how sometimes the Underground will do the same gimmick the same sort of plot or story gimmick twice in an episode like they have mm -hmm. two uh you know they'll have two matches that are like sub there's settling blood feuds at the same show and it's like why don't you know why you do this but i thought it worked really well when they had run-ins to big matches twice on this show because the first time tejano comes in and he's a badass and he cleans house and he takes over the second time Marty the Moth runs in and just gets swatted Swat. out of it. The match yeah. continues. <laughs> and I <like, laughs> <I'm laughs> <trying to hit laughs> Well, yeah, and they're totally <laughs> awesome. It was like Marty was running into feed and that was it. And then nobody fed to Tejano and he just squashed whichever guy he could get his hands on. Yeah. But there was nobody running back in to try to get back on him at all. I like I like that. Um, 
Vamp interviews the trios champs. This was the segment that um, helped Ivelisse get over even more. Vamp questions at one point in time, like, hey, you're the trios champs, but your legs all busted up. Are you even going to be able to go? And all three of them answer that basically, you know, they don't like each other, but if it's time to fight, it's time to fight. And well, one of them said, well, we don't like each other, but if it's time to fight, it's time to fight. Would you put the motion in the basket. I fight it's time me. to fuck I me. Fight me. I'd hard. fuck me hard. <laughs> Super duper weird. Um, and you Would hear you a lot of Angelico. This is probably the most Angelico talks the entire time on Lucha Underground, I think. He sounds English. He sounded, I he sounded like if a Brit grew up on Venice Beach. Yeah. And that's the best I could possibly describe his app. Uh, oh, I his, trust an American accent. His weird Dutch Afrikaner I, I, think, I think he sounds like when Dennis on Always Sunny tried to sound like Mel Gibson as an Australian. That's what <laughs> Angelico sounds like. Oh, man. I still remember as a kid watching Mad Max with Mel Gibson dubbed. Nowadays, it's the it's the version that he bought back where he redubbed himself or he put yeah. back the original audio. But when I was a kid, Mad Max did not exist in the States in Australian. <laughs> it was it's, dubbed it's, into it's, English. It's, his new dubbed version um, legally allowed to be released. Well, a lot of things with uh, Mel Gibson may be <laughs> questionable legally. <laughs> he changed oh. it to be a little more conservative. Anyway, let's get to this title match. Um, this is um, a phenomenal match. Yes. I had forgotten that this is probably one of my top, at least 10, maybe top five matches. This is the this is the match to me that made me actually like the Puma character. That made me like look, you're getting Ricochet versus Drago. This is a match that I would have loved to have seen even before Lucha Underground. These guys were both hot out there. And I don't think that Drago was getting enough credit in AAA at the time. <coughs> no, not at, at all. all. No, no. <coughs> Sorry. Choking. I'm dying. Um like to me. The fact that the Lucha Libre of Puma, this is the first time I think you're really seeing it at all. You know, um, notice how none of us like to jump in and help just to know. No, I'm, it's fine. Of, I'm just dying. Just Don't anybody say there. anything. <coughs> uh -huh. This is no, our I, 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 I thought it was really good. I thought they meshed really well. Um, there was a bit of a schmoz ending, but also, uh, you know, also like Puma beats Drago with his jobber finish, which. I guess sort of makes sense, but also like cemented that Drago isn't on the main event. He isn't on well, that. Pool. He already got fucked up by uh, by Hernandez. They didn't want it to seem like Puma was being mean. They wanted to look like he was reluctantly beating him. So he wasn't yeah. really trying enough to hit him with the move that he stole from the great Jack Evans from the heavens. <laughs> yes. El Mejor Luchador and La Mundo. Yeah, they wanted you to feel a little bit like it was a screw job, but I mean, I think they felt they made the importance of Drago leaving feel better than the mask versus mask match. That's I mean, true. this this felt oh. like crap. They're retiring Drago, or like I think at the time I thought like, oh, they've just got big plans for him in AAA right now. Maybe like his little run on the underground is actually getting him favor down there in Mexico, and they're gonna like push him in the top main event. Little did I know that that was completely wrong on many levels. <laughs> well, it's funny because this aired the week before the tapings that I went to where he won his chance to come back. <laughs> right. So I'm just like, oh, well, that was fast. You know, <laughs> it was yeah. kind of strange, but yeah, I, I look, it was a, it was a great match. The, uh, the destroyer with no ref there. I like that moment. So you, you feel like, you know, Drago could have won this at some point in time. Oh, and that, he got that. He got that like five count visual pin too. That's yeah. You know. That's always, that's always a big, that, this is good wrestling writing. Like whoever laid this out and agented this and came up with the storyline, this actually worked um, even for its, you know, regular wrestling tropes that it had. What was the crazy crucifix, small package, arm submission breaker line. submission thing that Trago did? I have never seen this one before. Oh, I thought he, I thought long he's long. Long. no, he, uh, this wasn't the, the the one he normally does. He's on his face when he does it. This was totally different. This was like a small package into an uh, arm bar thing. That was a dope it's, move. Yeah. Oh God. There's a name for it. Um, somebody a lot older than Drago does it. I, I can't I remember so. who this. 
I, look, this is anybody in their twenties. But I'm just yes. saying, look, this is one of the things about Drago. This guy has a ridiculous move set, and oh, yeah. Yeah. The amount of times that I have seen Drago perform, and then he still pulls out something that I've never seen him do before. Oh, that's who I've seen do that move before. Gato Weber ready. Oh, him. <laughs> I mean, not him. Yeah. Well, I just yeah. think I just always find it uh, amazing. But look, the uh, spinning pile driver for the win, uh, secondary Puma move. Um, it was you know, a great move. Puma reluctantly wins. Conan's cheering, you know, finish him, trying to get his, put him in a body bag. And on. he's like, no mercy, no mercy. And all I'm thinking of is, where do we go? My darling, <laughs> my lovely. I'm all alone. I'm where just going to let you go? keep singing. Oh, 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 I'm not going to oh, say oh, 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 Where do we go? How much time we got, guys? Keep it going. No, don't keep I don't, it going. I anyway, don't we get a big thank over. you, Drago Chant. He walks out, and we get another. This is like the sixth or seventh or twentieth vignette in this show. And Drago speaks, as we mentioned earlier, with We will meet again. I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's how he did it, right? We will meet again. We will meet again. And then Aerostar must have been back there playing with some aerosol cans because then there's a giant fireball and something that sounded like flapping wings. Mm -hmm. Maybe yep. Drago flew off. We he don't know. Shit. Is he a dragon? I don't know. He is. I don't know. Confirmed. We, thought we asked him. He yeah. said yes. Yeah. Listen, yeah. I've been watching the polls. I've been watching the polls. This election is heating up. There are results starting to come in. And we've got some more results for you, too, right after this. God damn it. I don't want to wait. Lucha-Masks.com, in partnership with Mass Republic, give you personal protective masks to keep you Lucha strong in the fight versus COVID-19. With world-class luchadors Blue Demon Jr., The Lucha Brothers, L.A. Park, Ultimo Dragon, Kane Velasquez, Conan, and so much more. Head to Lucha-Masks.com and you too can become a masked warrior. Lucha-Masks.com, powered by Pro Wrestling Revolution. All right. So hopefully the uh, poll lines aren't too long for you people out there who are voting. You better be voting. Are you guys? Did you guys all vote? Did you guys uh, vote? Mail, me. I voted. Weeks ago, mail. bro. I voted. You, you did what, Byron? Yeah. I, if Today is Tuesday. Of course, I voted. Who'd you vote for? The Libertarian candidate? The Green Party? You look like Tuesday. one of those throw my vote away kind of guys. I'm just I'm just asking. Yeah, my vote doesn't no, you matter don't. anyway. I'm not going to vote. So Meatloaf, 60 million. We know who you would have voted for. We know how much you love Trump. You're a Trump guy. Uh, a he He's a Yeezy <laughs> fan from day one. Yeezy! I would have voted for AOC. I, I, I wrote in Ricochet Excuse because me. I want to hear that acceptance speech. I voted for Ricochet I'm for president of the United States. The United States. <laughs> From Padawika, Wuka, Kentucky, or wherever the hell he's from. <laughs> Trevor Man. <laughs> Paducah, Kentucky. <laughs> anyway, um, let's take a look at another one of our polls since we're talking about the election here. As okay, let me take it out. Was not that <laughs> kind of poll. <laughs> so, I thought listen. we were doubling up on the shaver commercials. I'm sorry. All right. So, which former Lucha Underground performer had the biggest year in 2020? The denizens of deliciousness have voted. The delicious daddies are here to count Some the votes. Going on there. And so, well, you say that, but first of all, you're the one that got Santos Escobar to retweet first. And then I stoked the fire a little bit with Karrion Cross, but he didn't retweet. He just commented and liked, and that got quite a few of his followers going. So mm -hmm. then Karrion Cross was leading. The Penta and Phoenix fans never really came out, but then... Then my buddy Thunder Rosa got a hold of this thing, retweeted it, and ran away with it. With 47.4% of the vote, Thunder Rosa had the biggest year in 2020. Um, and here's I agree. the thing. I think, I think that there's actually an argument to be made there. I think it is either yeah. Cross or Thunder Rosa, as big it is, as it is for, um, for Phantasma. I feel like Phantasma is exactly where he should be. He's doing exactly what he should be doing. They're giving him a nice push. He's making the best of it. But, you know, it's also the cruiserweight title. Like, if he was the NXT champ, uh, I, I would say it was clear in a way him. 
<coughs> but they didn't put the big belt on him. They gave him the little guy belt, and they're letting him do more with it than they have with most, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. So big props to him, and I think that that shows that he is top-tier talent. But I don't know if it makes him a top guy. He's gone for cross if the injury hadn't happened. Yeah. And honestly, you would have probably had to. Because obviously, I think Cross was on this trajectory, which was just like, like I, almost vertical. <laughs> I think he still is. I think that this injury may, in fact, actually end up helping Cross in the long run. I think that that the carrying Cross thing, when he comes back, is going to be over so huge. Uh, audience or no audience. Um, and you know he's been filming in Tulum. I don't even... Cool uh, yeah, I, I don't know if they can... I don't even know if they can contain him on NXT for long. I feel like at this point they're going to hold him back. They're going to maybe do something with Finn um, and and push him and leave him on NXT. I believe that he is pretty much recuperated at this point. So now it's just about getting uh, the ring rust off and getting an opponent for him. I don't think that they're going to bring him back before the landscape is correct for it. Um, and I, I could see them even holding off until around WrestleMania time for the big NXT pay-per-view leading into WrestleMania. They could hold off that long, and I don't think it would hurt him one bit. Or they could potentially even bring him into uh, one of the other shows. I could see him on a Raw or a SmackDown pretty easily. I, I worry about that a little bit. I feel like if he makes his name in NXT a little more, he'll be a little more undeniable once he gets to the big shows because right. that's what like you really want um and and he needs to get into big programs when he gets up to the big shows which i believe is going to happen i think that the way his merch moves and his gimmick and his style and his look it's going to carry him a long way that yeah, being said go ahead yeah he definitely uh i think uh, i don't want to say thrives i think he definitely um he is best presented with a long long story of continuity where the details matter and you can do that in nxt and you can do that on the big shows to to an actual much bigger scale uh to much more success because you have all those resources but more often than not the the bigger shows um they work towards tv segments and so yeah but it's very plausible that his whole gimmick could could be shelved because they want good ratings for this one quarter hour next week and they put him in a diaper like big show and then it could then he has to rehabilitate all you know even though it doesn't make sense like the next week you know sometimes they make a decision just but for see the- here's here's where here's where I, I I hope that he goes to raw because I think they're starting to realize now that they have to put the talkers on there they have to put the people who they can expand into two or three segments in an episode, you know, like they're doing the stuff with Bray Wyatt where they're, they're using him three, four times a night, not even wrestling, but just for segments with him and Alexa, they're doing the stuff with the hurt business where they're letting MVP have the stick. And I think the second they get a whiff of cross and his promos and how he can stretch a story or how one little piece of it could be him breaking an hourglass in the back. And then the, he could do an in-ring thing or Scarlet could do something creepy, kind of like, you know, what Alexa's got going on right now. Once they realize that, that he has the potential to fill time and progress story with simple little actions like that, I think that raw would be the best fit. Yeah. No, I see. He was doing all of that NXT where he was doing, he was pro- he was doing that progressing story, but in a variety of ways, which is to me is so important for a wrestler on TV because I always I always love <clears throat> seeing a wrestler who's able to make who's able to earn a paycheck without having to take a bump. And so, if you have a wrestler you invest a lot of time and money in, and they can go out and get you a good quarter hour without yeah. wrestling a match, that's a good investment. All right, we got to talk about. Thunder Rosa, um, friend of the show, friend of ours. I uh, Thunder Rosa dropped the NWA title to Serena Deeb this week, and that set off a cacophony of things that happened. I can't, dude. My DMs blew up. Everyone was hitting me up like I was just going to happen to know what the hell was going on. The rumor mill was going. There's uh, talk of all sorts of things that have been happening backstage at WWE that they um, that there was a dust up because she didn't get approached by NXT over there. 
Um, there's been talk that, you know, Billy Corgan is letting people go because their power contracts aren't able to hold people under contract without that show. There's talk that she did so well at AEW that they wanted her full time on the roster. But then that doesn't necessarily make sense if Deeb is the one that's holding the title. There's talks that she was going to WWE this week. There was all sorts of rumors going on. Um, and, hey, Byron, can you pull up the the, the Mel video? You, you have that anywhere? For, I can probably find it from her. Um, her the, the the one where she does the uh, the reveal. Right. Hold on. I, I can cheeky, probably find it. Yeah, I got it. Byron's slow on the internet. Anyway. So I will tell you that of the things that are going on, and then there was even there was even speculation that Thunder Rosa might be pregnant and that she was dropping the belt and pulling out of matches because uh, she had a butt in the oven. That was the other rumor I heard. So just Whoa, I never heard that shit. Yeah, like I got asked flat out, like, "Hey, is uh, Mel got a bun in the oven?" By a few people. Um, huh. and I will say this: I asked. I asked Thunder Rosa directly about one of those four possibilities. No, no, it's not that one, but you could, okay. I mean, that's, um, I don't like Sorry. that. I'm, I'm bad on it. No, I mean, Hey, you can put that mm-hmm. back if you want. I'm yeah, I don't, I didn't mind that one. Um, I asked Thunder Rosa directly about one of those four possibilities of whether she was, um, you know, going to stick around in WA or whether she was going to AEW or whether she was going to WWE or whether she was pregnant. And I will tell you that I got a very succinct answer about one of those things. I'm not going to tell you what it is. And it was a no. (laughs) She gave me a very clear no about one of those things. I won't say what that thing is, but she gave me a very clear no about one of them. So now I have a 75% chance of getting it. You can't find it, Byron? Do I have to find this one? She has a lot on her Twitter. I just scrolled through the thousands of kids he dressed up as her for Halloween. Oh, that's so nice. adorable. Yeah. No, that's a sign that you're over as fuck. Seriously. Like yeah. if someone dresses up as you, you're, you're yeah. over. I mean, literally she was the most talked about wrestler this week. Hands oh, down. Yeah. And she down. wants to be. She wants there we to go. You're ready. She, here she is addressing. Yeah, go ahead. Full, make it bigger. Yeah, why does why does my audio work when I do this and yours doesn't? Do I have to do this for you, Byron? Over it. That's a lot of dedication. Getting all those tattoos. It's full. Okay, guys, her. It's not that loud. So. Yeah, I can't hear any of that, Byron. Your computer sucks. I hear it. I don't hear it. Anyway, she says. Basically, uh, what, what Byron, what are you saying? I don't know why audio isn't working for you. No, because we're not hearing it from your Mm. computer. Anyway, doesn't matter. The point was she was teasing people of whether or not she was going to, uh, and the video says a lot anyway, whether or not she was going to NWA, AEW or wwe and she went and got that tattooed like that that is just (laughs) dedication um it was a very uh cheeky response to all the rumors i think oh come on we got a british guy on the show i can't get away with a cheeky he did that he did that whole he did that whole fucking segment just to get that cheeky joke in i said cheeky reveal (laughs) cheeky reveal yeah it was worth it anyway I've heard she's out of the uh, Mission Pro tournament now too, though. So it it does it leaves a lot of speculation. Oh, is out she? there? Um, she's time for to build a legato. Like, here's the thing: if Serena Deeb has the belt, but Serena Deeb is signed to AEW now, what does that say about Mel? I don't get it. Like, is she going to to AEW, but not? getting the same treatment that Deeb is or doesn't need it? Or do they have something more in mind for her? I mean, Nyla Rose is up next again for Sheeta. Yay. That doesn't excite me at all. Um, but, you know, if you're WWE right now, you got to be looking at Thunder Rosa like, how did we miss that boat? You turn on mm-hmm. AEW one day, you see this girl 
come out of nowhere. She's getting this fire promo. It's making the NWA title look great. The best any NWA title has looked in ages. It's there with the lights on the pedestal. Here comes this girl coming up. And at first they're probably thinking, ah, she's nobody. She's some indie wrestler. She's older than other people. She started later than everybody else. She was a whatever character on Lucha Underground in a mask. She's not WWE material. Right. Then you see her on Dynamite against Deep, which best women's match of the year so far. Period. Mm -hmm. Hands down. And then she's in the title picture giving Sheeta, one of the best wrestlers from Japan, a run for her money, you know, which has got to be making them think, oh my God, she could stand toe to toe with all these great Japanese girls we've got over here who are far and away better than half of the other girls on our roster. You got to be sitting over there in Triple H's office or Regal's office or whoever's at NXT who's supposed to be getting talent and saying, how did we miss the boat on this? She's just an NWA. She fights in Combatties America, and we couldn't yeah. pick her up on the WWE roster for pennies on the dollar at some point in time. Like, they got to be sitting there thinking, how did we fuck this up? They have to. There's on so many levels that you're pointing out. Like, one, she's marketable. Two, she's, uh, she has that, you know, Ronda Rousey, you know, uh, crossing over into the other sport appeal. Um, all this stuff. And also, she's just a great wrestler. And I really hate to do this because she's been doing really well recently. But like you have, how many Aliyahs do you have at the performance center? Yeah. yeah. So many that they've spent and they're paying them probably not much, but collectively they probably have spent so much money on Aliyah and other Aliyahs for close to a decade. And they, yeah, how long have we been there? She's been like seven to ten yeah. years, I'm sure. And they will never be able to lace the boots of where Mel's at now, let alone where Mel would end up after another year or two on a major TV show. Yeah, and I get it. Like, look, Mel has not been doing this that long. Her promo skills are just now coming into their own, but they're good now. And and clearly, with what the Performance Center has to offer, th there's a lot to work with there to the point where somebody should have called her. She shouldn't be going around on all these podcasts, including ours, and talking about how her opportunity at WWE was as a referee. And Are was, you kidding me? And it was kind of a long shot, too. Correct. And, like, it just, that would be a horrible yeah. fit for her. Come on, man. It's just, it's, it's hilarious to me. And, yes, the rumor should be swirling because, yes, everybody should be talking about her. She's not necessarily a free agent unless it's true that Billy has let her out of the contract. Who knows? Um, but without TV, I could see it. I mean, they, they don't really have a leg to stand on keeping people if they don't have. He's not the guy who stands in people's way anyway, is he really? No, he's really not. And he stands to benefit more by having his champs on AEW or other places. And NWA was always kind of that promotion. It was like, we're the, we're the belt. And you're the territory. We'll bring our show to your town. And then it'll move on or we'll leave a territorial belt in your town, you know, and, and check in with you every now and then or let you fight our national guy every now and then. That's always kind of what they've been affiliated with the company because when they with WCW at one point and obviously yeah. TNA. So they've mm -hmm. always been actually at some point connected to bigger companies. Well, in and, yeah. in and out of it yeah. um, and, and ECW as well. But it's just the. That's kind of the way NWA is always run. <laughs> and they can kiss my ass. You love that promo when they turn the uh, turn the belt over. Anyway, yes. the um, it, Billy Corgan seems like he's smart in that realm. And when he has something big to do, if he buys himself some goodwill, some other places, it'll probably benefit NWA more than than being a jerk. So yeah, the moral of the story is. Um, Mel maybe does have something big coming up or maybe she doesn't. Maybe it was just time for her to drop the belt to somebody else. And she dropped it to deep. Who knows? Mm -hmm. She's still got mission pro. She's got her own stuff going on. Um, but I do find it interesting that she's not in the tournament from hell anymore. That is, mm -hmm. that is, I don't know what that means, man. And, and I'm, I'm tempted to ask her, but at the same time, it's like, I don't want to ask her because I almost don't want to get the real answer. A, because this isn't a news show where I'm trying to get the scoop. I like to be surprised by wrestling. Every now and then we find out something before someone else. And the times that we report it is when other people are just getting it wrong. It doesn't matter if anyone gets it wrong about Thunder Rosa. She's going to do her thing. She's going to be a huge star. She is a huge star. And hopefully she can just find a great way to monetize that and keep furthering her career. Uh, I, I could see any of the scenarios 
being a good fit for her. Either she she stays the queen of the indies, um, running her own promotion and being an NWA and, and helping out Billy and those guys whenever she can, or she moves over to AEW, which I think could really help a lot of the girls there get a leg up, or she goes to WWE, where I think if she goes to NXT, they could really turn her into something, and you could see her being I, next year's Shotzi Blackheart. I'd love to see her with Fantasma. I think, I mean, I think you throw her in that program with yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no. I was just said I'd like I'd like to see her in the um, Legado group as the female. Be interesting. Yeah. To be on that doing stuff because I mean, obviously, imagine her in a imagine her in a nice like suit or something as well <laughs> with the half fainted face. I mean, it's hard to imagine her in anything else after that picture that Byron showed. <laughs> but sorry, Brian. I apologize, Brian. I sincerely apologize. Sorry, but that computer, I mean, computer glitch. Look, it started with that picture of her on the top of the stairs, and then there's like, uh, I mean, what is going on? She's like Brian um, Appreciation Minute. Bro, like, well done. For real. What are you doing? Letting her out of the house like that. (laughs) I don't, I mean, I I don't think, I think Mel can do whatever she wants. How are you going to tell her to not? I would not be the one to tell her no. I'm going to agree with you on that, Byron. She's like, I'm wearing this today. I'll be like, okay, cool. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> also, like, thing, here's something interesting. This uh, I'll just bring it up again. Um, no, here oh, we go. Save. I don't know how to use this computer. So, like this thing, right? She's yeah. very clearly training for MMA at the at this place. Oh yeah, this is an MMA session. She was doing. Uh, I think this was jujitsu session. Session. Or yeah. Something, right? Yeah. So yeah, and there's the question: A W W W E or N W A? And then she did a post that said, "Read between the lines." The one in the <laughs> middle is W W E. So if you're reading in between them, maybe that's well, what she means. What lines are there? I don't know. Uh, who knows? Oh what I what I like is I think she was just using the phrase. I don't think it actually meant read between the lines. I don't think it was I, a riddle. I, I mean, I think the proper use of read between the lines is when you do this. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say the same thing, Byron. Thank Give you. Give him the finger. All right. Yeah. Well. Look, I think she's smart to play it up no matter what. Most talked about wrestler of the week. She also won our poll very handily for the best former Lucha Underground Luchador of 2020. And uh, and there's an argument to be made for it too, though I really do think that Cross as well has a, a genius argument to make for that. So yeah. um, we have one more poll that I want to get to. Um, oh, and it's a kick in the pants. So. We'll be right back in a minute. We'll talk about that on this election day special of Mass Mats and Mayhem. If you're listening to this and you haven't visited LuchaCentral.com, it's time to do it. LuchaCentral.com is the online home for Lucha Libre, where you can get all of the top news in English and in Spanish. Find the best curated video content and original content not seen anywhere else. Find when Lucha Libre events would be happening in your area. Find photo galleries from top photographers covering Lucha Libre around the world. From weekly polls to annual awards. Seen and read by top executives in all of the major Lucha Libre promotions across the globe. And on top of that, it's free. LuchaCentral.com, your centralized place for all things Lucha Libre. Hey, did any of you guys see Hell in a Cell? (laughs) No. I was was watching Ring. Mm. Oh, that was that's not a bad call. Like Casey, I'm never gonna hate on you for watching better wrestling than the wrestling I'm watching, but I gotta say that I actually liked it. I liked Halloween Havoc too. I thought the second half of it was better than the first, but um the the dude, the ladder match with EO and Candace, I they totally brought it. But also the the you you were breaking up me. What'd you say? I, I missed the second half because my internet fucked up completely. Oh, go and watch it. Like, it's actually worth it. Um, oh, and then, but also, no. Hell in a Cell was great. The Sasha Bailey match, not bad at all. I liked that whole pay-per-view. I don't know what's going on. I I, ha- I have very little to complain about with WWE right now. I mean, there's still some Randy people that are misusing and not doing what I want them to do with, but the people that they have out there, for the most part, I- I'm digging it. Well, you're like, always going to get a good match, I think, with Sasha and Bailey, especially. Pay- oh, not always. <laughs> oh, the, be- the best bit was when she's too sweaty to do the tape and she asked the referee. That was just fantastic. 
But look, it's like three or four days later, and Sasha still has the belt. So you know, here's to new. Thing. Yeah, she didn't. She didn't lose it the next night for once. Pretty That's- good. Yeah. So who knows where they're going now? They're totally off the map. They're on to some new stuff. I'm just, I'm just pleasantly surprised. Like, look, I know that for a lot of indie fans and Casey, the WWE is probably never going to do it for them again. I don't know if it's ever going to get to a point where it does. I don't know if there's going to ever be enough good characters for a lot of people to ever come back, but for what they're doing with their characters, like the Roman Reigns, Jey Uso thing, I'm digging. I'm digging what they got going on with Brandy Orton. I like the Bray Wyatt stuff, the Hurt Business. I hated it at first. I'm liking now. I like what they're doing with Private Party over on the other brand. Uh, them feuding with the remaining half of New... Like, I actually just like the stuff they're doing right now. It works for me. I think they're the right people are on the right shows. I think I want to the, point out that Justin called them Private Party. Whatever. <laughs> street street profit party p- private people they're all the same group anyway right they all look the same no it's montez ford and then private and the other guy the other guy yeah like they're good over there it works whatever those two guys montez and his buddy those guys anyway the point of what i'm trying to say is that uh not everything in wrestling is always going to float everyone's boat and i don't expect it to and this certainly isn't the heyday of WWE, but they are doing a lot better right now. I think they have listened to a lot of the demand. I think that they have the right stuff on SmackDown. They have the characters that you don't want to see a big, long thing about. You just want to see a quick thing, a match, a segment, you know, and let just the one guy at the top, Roman, have the three segments. Like, don't make everybody have three segments on SmackDown. It doesn't make sense. Get in and get out do the high profile stuff and the telenovela stuff I think belongs there too. I think moving Ray and Murphy and uh, Seth Rollins over there to do that bit with Dominic on SmackDown is absolutely where it should be. It did not work on raw at all. And it works great on SmackDown. Enough of that. Let's get to our last poll. Byron, you got that one for me. I got it right here. Oh, this one breaks my heart. What you, what former Lucha underground star is the most underutilized. Um, we got Swerve, Jack Evans, and Angelico, Taya, and Ricochet. This is not tough. The winner that you have selected, the Denizens have selected, clearly Jack Evans and Angelico. This is an educated audience. That is the correct answer. There is no Finally. other answer. <laughs> um, not that these other people aren't underutilized, but let's look. look Taya... She's underutilized because she's not on a big show, but what they're doing with her at Impact, she's clearly a star over there. She's clearly a top guy. She has juice in the locker room. Um, I am very surprised with with Johnny Gimmick name being over on WWE TV that they haven't pulled her over, but maybe she's just honoring her other contracts um, because she wants to. I don't know what her deal is with AAA right now. Is she still under contract to them as well? Does anybody know? I don't know. I don't know. She like is it. a legend of Lucha Libre. Kevin Kleinrock would be very upset if I did not mention that. Um, but I think she's I think she's in a decent position. I would love to see more out of her. I think she's got one more big run in her. I got to be honest. I would like to see that run be in WWE for her. I think she deserves it. And I think that's the last stop on the train where she hasn't been. I don't think she should go to Impact. I don't think it serves her. Or not Impact, but AEW. I just don't think that that serves her in her career and any form she'd have to go over there and do a lot of work or very little reward which would be stupid but i think she's being used fine um that being said swerve and ricochet here i feel like swerve should be higher right on now. this list well he's doing all right he's getting a little bit of time but i mean i feel like he's a solid intercontinental run kind of guy. I feel like he could be at the middle of the card and the top guy at the middle of the card. I mean, I feel that way about Santos Escobar too, but I don't think he's getting that opportunity. And I don't know that Ricochet is ready to be that guy because I don't think Ricochet can move a storyline enough. So I I think that I think Ricochet 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 is underutilized, but I don't think he deserves to be utilized necessarily. I don't know that he's earned it yet. Like when he was like, like, when he was in NXT, when he was in NXT with the before, and he could do his thing there, it fit in. 
And it's the type of stuff that gets you over in NXT. He did his flippy stuff. He did a couple catchphrases or a couple words. And he walks out and pretends he's a, like a comic book superhero. And it works. Yeah. And it's great. But on the on the two main shows, SmackDown and Raw, he just doesn't he doesn't have. It doesn't at resonate all. at all. Yeah. And and I just I, I mean, I could think of storylines like they, if they put him in hurt business, maybe as a tag along guy. But how far is that going to get him? He's the what? The next Shelton Benjamin? I'm like, what is oh, he? Virgil. No, Virgil is better than that. Virgil can cut a promo if he needs to. Oh, guys, I got breaking news. Oh, gentlemen. Breaking What's your breaking wrestling news? news? AEW Series 3 action figures are going to be Matt Jackson, Nick Jackson, Darby Allen, Orange Cassidy, Riho, and the Bastard Pac. Nice, nice. Where's Bastard Pac anyway? What happened to him? Uh, he's he's going to be on next week on AEW. Oh, finally. They already announced it. Yeah. Wait, so why are they doing the Young Bucks again? Because their wife fucking controls the merch. That's true. <laughs> I, that Darby, that Darby's going to be a hot sell. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah, so. yeah. That, that might actually get me to do it, something. It's, it's, they already it's, said he comes with a skateboard, too. So oh, oh, guess, guess what this is? Something crinkly. This is the Darby Allen shirt I got off eBay. Oh, oh. dope. I also got the glacier mask. Nice. I spent nice. like 20 bucks for both. Did you send me this fucking Mandalorian, Byron? Yeah, put it in ML Tuesday. Do you have it yet? No. He doesn't have <laughs> no. it yet, apparently, I guess. I don't know. Um, he, he never answers when questioned directly. He only answers when you're in the middle of something else completely important. You realize this, right? So, dickhead. What? <laughs> um... Anyway, Jack Evans and and Helico, uh, I, we you've you've heard us talk about it before on the show. I think that they're clearly the most underutilized, even more so than Ray and Penta. As you saw, Ricochet. as you saw by my breaking news, we don't get another new tag team. We get the Young Bucks again as action figures. Right, mm -hmm. uh, it's just a, a waste. Those guys could be such stars. They're only young once, and that time is leaving them rapidly. So I, I just hope very much that AEW, I feel like they're maybe starting to get the hint. And um, now they're starting another show at AEW, right? Now they're going to do some kind of Saturday show with uh, Renee and Mauro if, as soon as their contracts are done at WWE. Is that actually happening? Is that a real thing? Oh, who knows at this point? They've been talking I mean, about the third hour, which they talk yeah. about it in a way that it sounds like they're going to they hate it. dynamite to the third to three hours, but then they, after talking about it for a while, then they clarify the third hour is going to be a separate uh, program and they get a little bit too like network, network, network executive type to speak about it. Instead right. Saying, Hey, we're going to, well, do because it. that's probably where it's at right now. It's like, you have to figure out how to monetize it before they're going to put it on TV. Now, if they get Renee young or whatever, her real name is the uh, Renee French Canadian name. Paquette. 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 Yeah, oh, first Canadian I, name. Shows up. I think WWE is still like they they got her back to do smack the after SmackDown talk show. Yeah. And talking then, smack. She'll yeah, be she'll be Renee be. Moxley if she gets hired though. So <laughs> it's all good. Oh, I don't know if they should do that. I don't even think they should acknowledge it. Dude, she um, trains. She she rolls. But yeah. is that the right word? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Kinda. If it's jujitsu, it is. Um yeah, we'll see. And look, Mauro, if you do get Mauro, you got to do something with him. And I don't know that you can move aside Shivani and JR at this point, even though I would. I don't think that they I could. Would. I oh. think, oh, God, you know how much better Mauro could get over the, the indie cred and style of these guys at AEW than JR can? And I no, love but JR. You know what? You got you got Excalibur for that, and he does fine. I I feel like oh, but he can't do it like Mauro Ronaldo. Come on, man. Mauro Ronaldo could make Orange Cassidy's hands in his pocket seem like the most exciting moment on a generic episode of that show. It isn't it usually, but he could. Yeah. But no one makes it seem like it is. Is the problem? He does the spot. The crowd pops. Everyone at home is like, "This dude's awesome." And then I was like, JR feels totally yeah. deflated. It could. It could. You know what's, you know what's kind of cool? AEW, say what you want about them just pushing Cody and friends. Uh, but if you look at their merch sales, four of the 10 sellers, I was listening to this other podcast doing the favor. It's a wrestling figure podcast. It's great. 
They're like four of the top 10 shirts selling an AEW or best friends or Orange Cassidy related. Dude, uh, I've been saying for a long time, Orange Cassidy is over. They need to keep that going. They have to keep that going. So, of course, to keep it going, they had him lose to Cody. Good times. Well, let's just see where... Look, Cody's the ace, man. Cody's the ace. It's also a big... Big uh, draw for for them too. But he's not moving merch. I and mean, this is what happens when you get bad neck tattoos. <laughs> Just I gotta, saying. I got to be honest with you. There are at least two people, at least two people, probably more, who have gotten the Cody neck tattoo. You know, and I would probably make sure they can't get into any of the buildings. I, I probably oh, would. Yeah, they're they're psychopaths. They're gonna be they're gonna be stalking Brandy because they're like, no, no, I've got the tattoo. You're my girl now. It's gonna be frightening. Those we are real know you people. M M M. I have an MMM show tattoo designed with the the mask and everything that I might do on my shoulder, but not on my neck because that's right here. stupid. Like the lower series. back. Like, no lower back. Tramp stamp it. Sure. Uh, yeah. Oh. Get it. Get a kill shot tattoo on the lower yeah. back. Yeah, target. target, baby. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I hope you all voted. Please go vote if you haven't voted yet. I'm going to go watch the election results right now. Byron's going to go shave whatever that beaver that he fell on off his face. A, should we do a thing about shaving my beard? Meefloaf is going to go and be angry at something and can't. AC is going to be the only rational and reasonable human being on this show until the end of time because that's the actual bottom line. <laughs> that doesn't seem right. And that's oh. the bottom line. Oh. Meatloaf did the thing he was supposed to do. He's supposed to remind me to uh, cry repeatedly over the fact that Tracy Smothers has left us. That's a big, that's a big one. Yeah, and I, did, to, to, I did this on Markout Mania. You did? Yesterday. Good. Yeah. Go and listen to Mark Out Mania because it bums me out, man. I don't even like talking about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rest in peace, Tracy. The yeah. One of the godfathers out there, brother. Tell, tell, and, uh, tell Odorous we said what's up, brother. I have a lot of friends that uh, went up and down the road with Tracy. So to all of them, too, I, I send my best because I know it's a, it's, a, it's a tough one for you guys. Anyway, on that note, go out and vote. Keep your face not looking like Byron's and do smart things in life like Casey while me and me flow just watch along and play the home version of the game. So until next time, stay calm and stay in the mix. Peanuts. 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 <laughs>